Recite from Srimad Bhagavatam first. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 
Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya I'm not going to ask you to recite because of the time frame. I'm just going to turn myself to Sanskrit and read the translation and perfect. Ete punyat tama desha hare archa shitas chaye etan desha nishe veta shayas kamohi abhikshnasha So this is from the seventh canto of Shumat Bhagavatam, 14th chapter, ideal family life, verses 30 to 33. I just chanted one of them. The one that's related to today's topic especially. Translation. The sacred lakes like Pushkara and places where saintly persons live, like Kurukshetra, Gaya, Prayag, Pulah Ashrama, Namisharanya, the banks of the Falgo River, Satubanda, Prabhas, Varaka, Varanasi, Mathura, Pampa, Bindusarovara, Badarika Ashrama, Narayana Ashrama, the places where the Nanda River flows, the places where Lord Ramachandra and Mother Sita took shelter, such as Chitrakuta, and also the hilly tracts of land known as Mahendra and Malaya. All of these are to be considered most pious and sacred. Similarly, places outside India, where there are centers of Krishna consciousness movement, and where Radha Krishna deities are worshipped, must all be visited and worshipped by those who want to be spiritually advanced. One who intends to advance in spiritual life may visit all these places and perform ritualistic ceremonies to get results a thousand times better than the results of the same activities performed in any other place. The language, they see Bhakti Vedanta Swami In these verses and in the verse 29, stress is given to one point, Harer Achashuta Chaye or Har Archa. In other words, any place where the deity of the Supreme Personality of God that is worshipped by devotees is most significant. The Krishna conscious movement is giving the population of the entire world a chance to take advantage of Krishna consciousness through the ISKCON centers where one may perform deity worship and chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, and in this way obtain results with effectiveness increase a thousand times. Such constitutes the best welfare activity for human society. This was Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission, as it was predicted by him in the Chaitanya Bhagavata, until Lila 4, 126. <laughs> Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wanted the Hare Krishna movement with installed deities to spread to every village and town in the world so that everyone in the world might take advantage of this movement and become all auspicious in spiritual life. Without spiritual life, nothing is auspicious. Mogasha Moga Karmana Moga Dhyana Vichetasha, Bhagavad Gita 9.12. No one can become su successful in fruitive activities or speculative knowledge without being Krishna conscious. As recommended in the Shastras, Everyone should be very eagerly interested in taking part in Krishna conscious movement and understanding the value of spiritual life. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyanandana Shalakaya Chakshura Militam Yena Tasmai Shi Gurave Namaha Shi Chita Namano Bishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Svaya Rupa Kada Mahyam Dadati Svapadanti Kam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gaurange Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Anchakalpa Tarubesha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patitana Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shivasadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Shimate Bhaktivedanta, Swamin Itinamine, Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gauravani Pracharine, Nirvishesha Shunavadi Pashtatyade Shitarine. Right. So, as you have noticed, and Prabhupada gives specific stress to us to translate word-to-word -word translation also, to find out more details about the verse. For example, here, in this verse, says Archa Ashuta, places where the deity of Radha Krishna is worshipped, such as big American cities like New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, New Jersey, 
And in European cities like London and Paris, or wherever there are centers of Krishna consciousness, so it's very important to understand that in order to be in Vrindavan, you don't have to go to the actual Vrindavan. You can actually visit your local temple. But it depends on your level of consciousness and depends on sincerity of devotees who are engaged in worshiping the Lord and performing all those beautiful uh, artists and ceremonies in the Hare Krishna mantra. That makes it all auspicious. Once Prabhupada in 1974 in Melbourne said, Actually, you're not in Melbourne while giving a class in the temple. You're in a Vaikunta! And everybody, all the bodies, Jai! <laughs> because, you know, Prabhupada was wanted to stress, Vaikunta means there's no anxiety. This is the embassy of spiritual world. And then he paused for a moment and he said, No, Vrindavan! <laughs> After saying, it's Vaikunta in Jai, it's Vrindavan. He wanted to stress that Prabhupada was a Vrajavasi. He's our Acharya, he carried Vrindavan to all over the world, wherever he installed deities with Govinda Madhi Purusha prayers. He actually uh, inaugurated the Vrindavan atmosphere. <laughs> and so it's our duty to continue. As I've just learned from Nilamani Prabhu, that your Gurnitai deities, and as you know, Gauranga Mahaprabhu is not different from Radha and Krishna combined. He's personification of that beautiful mood of Radha Rani, and at the same time, he's the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In fact, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur says that there's no difference. Sometimes Krishna, if he has desire to experience that um, loving service to the Lord, he becomes Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And if he wants to receive the worship like Bhagavan, then he becomes Krishna. And so it just depends on his mood. It's the same person. So, uh, yes, yeah, so by coming here and engaging in devotional service, and that means you not necessarily have to become a pujari in order to worship the deities. You can from any service, including what you're doing right now, raising funds for the new temple. All of that is actually pure devotional service. Just pray the glories of the Lord. So I just wanted to glorify you for that effort. And I wish you all the best also for this magnanimous, beautiful endeavor. It's like, it's, it's huge. What I've seen in terms of project, it's your glory of your whole yatra. If your whole yatra participates, it's going to be... We will we're going to be spreading, like it says here, to every town and village, more and more, more and more. It's beautiful. All right, so now we're going to carry you to another Vrindavan, the Gita Nagari Dham. I hope it's coming up on the screen. So, of course, as you know, when Nanda Maharaj meets Vasudeva uh, in Mathura, and Vasudeva asks, Nanda Maharaj, he's asked, how are the animals? Uh, in Vrindavan? Do they have enough water to drink? Do they have enough pasturing grounds? Do they have enough herbs and other plants in the forest? Is there enough forest? <laughs> so he was asking, he was asking Pashu. Pashu means animals in Sanskrit, but Prabhupada translate cows <laughs> because cows are the most important animals uh, out of all animals, as you know. Cows are mother, it's not just an animal. And cow is all species. And so, of course, Krishna enjoys Vrindavan atmosphere very much. And so he creates those Vrindavans uh, across the globe because one of Prabhupada's mission, uh, the goal number six, <laughs> in terms of the purposes of ISKCON, was to create self-sustainable farms. And here, just three hours drive as we drove, there's a, another Vrindavan called Gitana Gridham. Beautiful, lush greenery, a lot of forests, all the 12 forests are there in Vrindavan, Talavan, Madhuvan, Kambinat, Vrindavan. And we are inviting to you today for this virtual journey to meet the residents of Vrindavan, as well as to get yourself familiar with Prabhupada's mission and vision for such beautiful self-sustainable projects. So let us meet our residents. Of course, as you know, Krishna he doesn't have only cows, he also have goats. <laughs> he even have dogs, by the way, in Vrindavan. So we also have a goat called named Kunti. So she's very fat, as you can see. It looks like pregnant. It's like constant pregnancy for her because she thinks she's a cow. And so she eats like she has four stomachs, but, you know, she probably cannot cope with it. Um, we bought her to, to help us to eat weeds, but instead of she eats grains and fresh grass and hangs out with cows all the time. So Bhakta Dudu, uh, the peacock, of course, Krishna, has a lot of peacocks, right, in Vrindavan. Do you know why Krishna wears a peacock feather, by the way? Does anybody know the story? That's the question. 
Any ideas why Krishna waves at people for that? He's a brahmachari. <laughs> well, he is. Krishna is the, the topmost brahmachari, that's for sure. Why he wears a peacock feather? <laughs> I haven't seen our brahmachari in a temple wearing peacock feathers. <laughs> well, there was a competition where the Krishna overdanced the head of the peacocks, and as a tribute, he gave this, you know, that's the only thing he had, the beautiful peacock feathers, and he gave that uh, feather as a gift to Krishna. But there's one more, more intimate reason, and that is that you look at the eye of that peacock feather, in the middle of it, it's got a blue color, deep blue. So those are the color of eyes of Sri Lanka. So that's for the information. Let's go further. Smart cows. Huh? Oh, Dudu, of course. Sorry, yes. Thank you. So Dudu, he comes every morning to Mangalarti at our temple. Anyone remembers to Mangalarti every morning here? Don't raise your hand. I don't want to, I know. I don't, you don't want to be too proud devotees, so I know that you do. So Bhakta Dudu does the same, and then he stays till the morning program ends, and then he goes to dining hall at around midday to demand Mahaprasadam. So unless you give him Mahaprasadam, he's not satisfied. He knocks with his beak on the on a glass door and demands, give me. <laughs> so, you know, very special residence in Gita Nagri. Of course, we have a lot of cows. Mainly, are they are brown Swiss cows. They are like Indian breed in terms of A2 protein. Very nice, wholesome milk, fatty. Meet the residents. Those are the current devotees that are on site. Many of them have been there five, four, three years. Uh, some of them are new. Some of them have been there for 15 years, as you can see, Dhruva and Paridata on the left. Um, so yeah, so this is our team of dedicated devotees on the farm, and we have about 50 residents outside the community, outside the Gitanagari property also. So I'd like to remind you about Prabhupada's uh, exp like quotations from Shastra and his boom conversations or uh, morning walks or letters, where he stressed the farm communities and self-sustainability program to be developed in this country. You find those uh, instructions more and more appearing after 1974. He started to realize that this is a big part of his mission that still is underdeveloped, and he started to stress it very often. So well, most of those quotes are actually from that. Wood green. See that there from asking so much. Farm, 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 farm. Four times. That is not my program, Krishna's program. Anadva Vanti Bhutani produced greenness everywhere and everywhere. Same year, letter to Harishari Prabhu. This is the next aspect of Krishna consciousness, which I wish to push forward. If I am able to travel again, then I shall visit the farms and make them perfect. On these farms, we can demonstrate the full Varnashram system. In these farms, if these farms become successful, then the whole world will be enveloped by Krishna consciousness. How about that? This is a very important letter for us, because this was exactly related to our farm when it was purchased in December 1974. Rupa Nuga Prabhu was at that time BBC from New York, and as you know, maybe some of you don't, Gitanagari Farm was purchased back then by New York Temple. Our farm projects are an extremely part of our movement. We must become self-sufficient by growing our own grains and producing our own milk. Then there will be no question of poverty. So develop these farm communities as far as possible. One more. Our next program will be to organize farming land as an example to the whole world how people can be peaceful, happy, and free from all anxieties. Of course, some other lawyers would say we should have an anxiety for Krishna. <laughs> you know, so there's different understanding of anxiety, but definitely comparing to city lifestyles, uh, mode of goodness in on the farm projects is very, very much prevalent. So today I would like to, to bring you back in the times when actually Srila Prabhupada traveled to Gita Nagri and not only inspected the farm. He, you know, gave one lecture there in Port Royal, 1976 of July. But also you can see how it's not easy to get to um, Vrindavan. There's always some obstacles on the way to visit the dam. So let us look at those uh, historical. I'm connected. Was told that the ride on the Radha Damana bus was Prabhupada's own cherished dream. 
and because it's a vehicle that we had just repaired to such first class shape. We were informed that our bus would be used to take real profit and that I would be the driver and Mom Wing would be the servant and Sunanda would be the cook. Now, oh, I was an expert bus driver. I could pull that bus into any spot, eyes closed. Seeing the devotees get on the bus, I was like terrified. I have never, ever, ever experienced fear, anxiety, suffering like, like that. So, I was just praying, trying to hold the bus so that the wheel would veer off to the left. And finally, after about two minutes of that, just intense, intense, you know, two minutes was like an eternity, a few eternities. So finally, the bus pulls away. Definitely, some of my life force was dropped on that, on that curve coming out of Lincoln Tunnel. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada had been standing looking at the wonderful fields. The devotees were gathered around. There were, were two fellows who were new devotees, very enthusiastic. They were country boys from not too far away. And they had brought from their own garden a medium-sized basket full of vegetables. And Srila Prabhupada picked up an eggplant out of the basket. And he just held it in his hand as though it were a jewel of some sort. And, and he held it kind of up and just looked at it. It had a real value, this produce. You could just tell his pleasure was immense. So at some point, he, he spoke about how we should be able to feed the neighboring city temples, supply them with very luscious kinds of fresh foods like this. But not only that, but in time of need, we should be prepared to also produce an abundance sufficient to feed people living in a 10-mile radius. Prabhupada took a walking tour of the barn and the machine area. And um, Parmananda was a little bit apologetic because Prabhupada had been to New Taliban a few months ago and chastised them for having farm equipment. But actually, they had farm equipment and was standing outside and the weather getting rusty. And at Gita Nagri, we had a lot of farm equipment, but everything was very well protected. But Parmananda was very much self-conscious. So as he was showing Prabhupada the different equipment, he was saying, and this is a disc and it'll do the work of so many men, and this is a you know, plow and it'll do the work of so many men. And Prabhupada was very silent. But when Prabhupada gave his class later on that evening, he said, it's not that we hate machinery, everything can be used in Krishna's service. He also very much caught our mood that we didn't want to be in the cities. And so when Prabhupada noted that, he commented in his class, it's not that we hate the towns and villages, everything belongs to Krishna. So he saw our mentality and he cut through it very effectively. So, this was the trip to Gitanagari of Prabhupada. Just by visiting there, he made this place a Tirtha. And uh, I'll just show a few more of historical pictures and then I'll move on to Dasya Prem side of presentation. And just before doing that, also, um, there's one more interesting fact about Gitanagari. And that is that when Prabhupada visited, when you saw how he visited the farm, he named the place New Varshana first. Somehow he felt the presence of Srimati Radharani in one way or the other. But then later, he renamed it to Gitanagari. And so, you know, devotees at that time, they just accepted the new name, right? But then later, <laughs> they found out that in 1956, nine years before Prabhupada coming to the United States or even West anywhere, he actually wrote Gitanagari Prophecy, or Gitanagari Manifest, or whatever, however it was called, a big essay where he described an ideal village where um, the people will live in harmony with God in the center. I'll just read this part of the quote. The, the general people, the beasts and the birds, the reptiles, plants and trees, and all of the animals reside in every nook and corner of the great universes. When such knowledge will be fostered from the vantage of the Gita Nagari, at that time only real peace and prosperity will usher in the world so anxiously awaited by the people of the world. So somehow or other, Gita Nagari became so dear to Srila Prabhupada. You know, by the time of the farm was established and by the time Prabhupada visited, the farm existed for like a year and a half. You know, Prabhupada had already 30 farms all over the world, if not more. 
by that time. <laughs> Yet Gita Nagari caught his attention so much just in that one day visit. You know, the amount of production of milk, even just to New York, we were exporting back then 400 gallons per week just to New York Temple. <laughs> Can you imagine? So, I mean, Prabhupada was so impressed by the land, the fertile land, because Pramananda Prabhu and Devikinanda, who you see here on, the, uh, on this picture. So he shows to Prabhupada, this is, I think, Pramananda Prabhu, or Devikinanda, I think maybe it's Devikinanda. So they were expert farmers. So when they were choosing the land, they found a fertile land where there's no rocks, sand, marsh, marshland, and so forth. So Prabhupada saw the potential. And that's why he said, we don't mind machinery as long as you provide this opulence to the nearby temples and even to the people in need if it comes to that. Uh, so please use the machinery. Also, he called the mood of those devotees, as Tarun Devi or somebody was explaining there, that uh, we also don't hate cities because cities are there for preaching. So though both they should work in a cooperation. And that's Prabhupada's desire, how he wants to establish those ur urban and rural connection. All right, so I'll just finish with this slide, slide, last slide where the seven goals of Srila Prabhupada are nicely described. If you've seen this logo <coughs> when we were celebrating 50 years of ISKCON, devotees made a wonderful job. They actually added the symbols and, in, and even written there. I know it's very bad font, you probably cannot see nicely, but you can see those symbols, they represent certain things like education, Krishna consciousness, the peacock feather, <laughs> loving exchanges, the heart, the symbols, the cartels, meaning that we are actually making harinams and festivals and propagating the holy the chant, and, and which is like a central activity, right? Yuga Dharma. Then there's building of and construction of temples, which you're doing now, which we're doing in Mayapur. Predominantly, it was referring to building a, a town where people, with all the devotees, can live together in the in Holy Land. So that's Mayapur, Chandrasaman. And of course, cows, meaning the self sustainable farms and book distribution to make those all goals happening and becoming alive. So they all work together in this way, compassion, education, cooperation, enthusiasm, support, and even simply, this is all what's needed to make this Prabhupada's dream possible. So now I'm going to give the word to Dasa Prem Prabhu and open his part of the presentation. Haribo, Haribo. Thank you, devotees, for the nice podcast here. More, more than all the other temples, very interesting. It's a major dialogue. Yeah, it's very nice to be here. Beautiful temple. Somehow, I've been here many times, but for deliveries and stuff, I was never able to actually see the altar. Wow. Incredible. So thank you for all your uh, loving devotional service here. So yeah, I'd like to speak more on the kind of um, practicality side of this whole uh, CSA presentation. Does, um, does anyone know what these three letters stand for, CSA? Maybe just a show of hands, or if you really want to shout it out. We can also do that. Some people? Okay. okay. Oh, it's really. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, cool. Just making sure, just making sure the screen was on. Okay. Okay. So CSA is um, Community Supported Agriculture. It's a subscription based model for purchasing organic seasonal produce directly from the local farmer. Um, so that's what, yeah, that's what we're kind of here presenting today is that now you've heard uh, some of the, about some of the activities that we have going on in Gitanagari. And um, not, not to boast Gitanagari or anything, but, uh, Unfortunately, many of our many of our farms in ISKCON aren't yeah aren't don't have the capacity to actually um, well to put it frankly to actually farm. Um, so yeah, we have lots of big lands, but 
um, as many Maharajas say that, that Gita Nagri is one of the only places that's that's actually um, it's actually like a farm. So yeah, we'd like to present to you that of course we've done it many years here before, so many of you may be familiar, but um, we will be doing a CSA this year and we would like for everyone to be able to take part. So just yeah, running through I don't know if people if you guys actually know. But um, we actually have two properties now. Did anyone know that? No, okay. Yeah, so we just bought maybe five miles away. We bought a new 80 acres. Uh, it's called Sarabi Kunj, which of course is the place of Kirtan. So hopefully we can all come there and do Kirtan soon. And so total now we have 430 acres, 90 cows, 20 plus devotees. Yeah, so, so much potential. So this is this is actually the land here. You can see that's Sri Surabi Kunj. Um, so a little history. So we actually started this vegetable distribution program in, in 2010. And um, started off with 25 members. Maybe maybe even someone here was one of those members. Uh, but then since then, we've scaled up to 115 members. Um, of course, so, yeah, I mean, of course, I recognize some of you here, and I, I know many of you have been to Gitanagri. And uh, even on the drive here, you see so many farms, right? So much farmland, so many barns, and stuff. And so, actually, we're, Gitanagri is actually situated in a very special area. And where's my stick? Yeah, forty-one percent of the land there in our county um, is actually used for agriculture. Maybe a little more than whatever, whichever county this is. Um, yeah, so we're, it's a very agriculturally rich area, and um, yeah, you can see some of our neighbors here, the Amish, who who do eventually will also get to that standard where we have our oxen pulling all this stuff. So, yeah, we, as we know, um, New Year's came came and went. Um, if anyone even remembers what their New Year's vows were, their New Year's resolutions. Um, but we all want this, right? We all want to improve our he eating habits. And hey, if we can do that while decreasing our grocery bills, all the better. So we're, we're presenting a, a way that, yeah, to help with this. And this is actually confirmed in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Does anyone have this verse memorized? Probably not. It's not, it's not a common verse. No. I don't think it's in Bhakti Shastra or anything. So life's, uh, this is Srimad Bhagavatam, life's desires should never be directed towards sense gratification. One should desire only a healthy life or self-preservation since a human being is meant for inquiry about the absolute truth. Nothing else should be the goal of one's works. So Prabhupada stressed so much also, right? Health, sadhana, service. Uh, if you don't have a healthy body, you'll be limited in what service you can do. So FDA recalled products. Um, so it's, it's interesting because, um, yeah, Srila Prabhupada actually, he warned us about so many things. And he was so, he was so ahead of his time in, in the wisdom that he gave us. Um, and he wanted us to yeah, ultimately produce our own food. And he would, he would talk very much down against the, these factory, factory food production can't eat nuts and bolts, things like this. So now, now as the time goes by, we're actually seeing more and more. Yeah, actually, wow, Prabhupada, what he says was so right. So we can see FDA recalled products since 2017. Just a few things. So, sorry if some of your favorites are on here. Uh, the usual suspects, here's some, <clears throat> here's some brands. That um, 
nobody works. Right? Hope, yeah, I also hope, hope nobody works at any of these places. Uh, And re reasons for recall, wisteria, wisteria, um, I, sorry, I can't even pronounce some of these. Salmonella, yeah, like this. Und undeclared milk, so it's actually, yeah, undeclared eggs, yeah. Don't want to, uh, yeah. Um, so even you, you can see now, if you go to the, the uh, FDA website, <clears throat> you can see many of these things are still happening. Actually, probably more and more. So E. coli, e. coli outbreak, um, see, we, we might think, okay, I won't buy like a Snickers. No, I, I kind of like turn my head when I go past the Snickers bar section. But, you know, a, a vegetable, what harm is that, right? Um, but, but actually, we can see, yeah, I mean, we've heard in the news, right? Salmonella outbreaks, E. coli outbreaks, you know, don't, don't eat, don't eat um, uh, tomatoes. And actually, even some deaths, unfortunately. So death to a romaine lettuce. Not sure what, what kind of karma you have had for that, but, uh, it, but it, it happens. Um, so one thing is, yeah, before the, the CDC was saying, OK, um, because of course, they're getting many of these vegetables from across the world. And so many of the water sources are contaminated. And so at first, the CDC was saying, OK, just Wash your vegetables very nicely, and the, it'll be okay. Um, but then later they found out that actually, even if you wash the vegetables very nicely, the contaminants have, have actually entered into the vegetables. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a not very good thing. And of course, pesticides. Here's a little graph here. You see the greedy businessman exploiting the farmers and yeah, forcing them into doing pesticides and then enters the food and then kids end up with ADHD and yeah, and what parents want a kid with ADHD, right? That's probably all I have to say. So farms, yeah, farms under threat. Um, so believe it or not, in 2021, 1.3 million acres of farmland were actually converted. So if no one can do that math off the, off the top of their head, that's 3,500 acres a day. How many acres? Is this is about maybe a, an acre, 2.7 2. acres. Yeah. yeah, so 1,000 thousand of these a day. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so anyways, the whole the whole farming thing it's it's a scary yeah, it's a scary situation. Um, the amount of farms, the numbers of farms are going down, and the, the the size of those farms that are still alive are having an increase because with globalization and all that all that good stuff, um, when the farmer actually gets the money, he's only getting like a tiny little percent of the actual, uh, of the profit, because so much goes into the marketing, uh, the transportation and all that. Um, so yeah, it's a scary situation for farmers. And even I think there was these, these uh, protests in India, right? Farmer protests in India, anyone, anyone was there for that? Anyone took part in that? No, okay. But CSA gives hope for the future. So one thing I want to say, yeah, CSA gives hope for the future because um, it's a way that, that, like in the definition of the CSA, the consumers can go directly to the producers, so you cut out all the middleman. Yeah, so it pretty much it's a way to give farmers a chance. And we'll play a little video here. This, um, this video was actually made by one of, one of, one of our brahmacharis. Thank you. 
It's a nice happy video, right? It's next. It's next. Um, yeah, so, um, oh yeah, our, our farming methods, the Nagri, it's all certified organic. Uh, we use all the, all the kind of like modern no-till farming methods. By the way, are there any, are there any farmers here? Any, any gardener, backyard gardeners? Any, um, tractor driver, anything? No? No one? Because I see you guys have a little in the, in the backyard, right? Yeah, I always see it. Okay. 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 So little 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 facts here, little um kind of science class here. Uh, not sure if anyone knew this, but we all hear this, right? Eat eat fresh vegetables. Do the kids ever do the teachers ever tell you that in school kids? Eat fresh vegetables? Do they do? Okay. So some we might think, okay, fresh vegetables means like something raw or 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 maybe you know has that little sprayer thing in the grocery store. But actually, there's more to fresh vegetables. Um, the reason you should, the reason to eat fresh vegetables, well, yeah, maybe as you as you've seen on this slide, is the vegetable actually loses nutrition from the time it's harvested to the time it gets to you. So you can you can see some some days here, eleven to fifteen days, uh, forty five percent nutrients. Yeah, and I'll say this isn't like it's not 45% of all nutrients, it's, but it's certain important nutrients that we all need. Okay. Get, get the point? You got the point there? Okay. Um, so here's some things about our pricing. So we're offering 15 to 20 pounds a week, um, seven to 10 varieties. And since moving to Gita Nagri, I myself have been doing a lot of cooking um, cooking for the deities and the devotees, so I, I kind of I, I know I know what devotees like to cook. So okra, tomatoes, cilantro, peppers, eggplant, potatoes. Yeah, I know. Does that does that sound like things you guys like to like to cook? Cauliflower. Yeah, I know. We're on the same page. So we're <laughs> as much as yeah, we're producing the these things that you like, and what it comes out. What it comes out to is 36, 36 a week. And you'll be getting vegetables from June 4th to October 29th. So that's 22 weeks. Um, and yeah, how it works is, as you know, like when people get the milk, when you guys get the milk, the milk comes every week. So you come to the Sunday program, get your Sadhu Sangha, get your Maha Pashadam, um, yeah. You get your milk and then you go right. So now you can, in the same way, you can come and get vegetables also. And some pricing: a uh, full share is eight hundred, but if that's too much, if you're single or maybe there's only a few people in your house, you can do a half share for four fifty. Okay, if the if it seems like a lot of money, um, what I actually did. I went to the Whole Foods website and I saw the first, I went to the first 10 organic vegetables that, we'll, that we are also producing. And I got the average price per pound. So the average came out to 276. By the way, there's no Whole Foods employees here, are there? No Whole Foods employees? Okay. Um, our, our price, yeah, so our price was actually less. It came out to $2 a pound. And what to speak of, unfortunately, even if you buy organic from Whole Foods or wherever your favorite grocery store is, um, they actually use like, they use fish meal, bone meal, 
the, you guys know what that fish meal and bone meal? I don't have to explain, right? Yeah, they, yeah. Anyways, it's things that devotees don't exactly want to be to for their food to be grown with. And we use, um, whereas we use cow dung. So this is a list of some of the vegetables. Um, the thing is, it's it's seasonal, right? This is maybe a, I don't know if they teach the kids this nowadays, but seasonal is also very beneficial to your health. Um, because, yeah, it kind of goes with the flow of nature. And actually, even in the, nectar de, in the Nectar Devotion, Rupa Goswami saying, quote, one should not fail to offer fresh fruit and grains to Krishna according to the season. So that's in the offenses to be avoided. So I'm not going to say your spiritual life is going to be finished if you don't offer Krishna seasonal vegetables. But hey, you can use all the help we can get, right? So, um, yeah, so we, we try our best to get you the vegetable like i said the vegetables that you want you want to eat um but one thing about eating seasonal is yeah you're not going to get you know you're not going to get tomatoes in october um there there's just certain things that aren't going to be available at certain times and some things because some people say oh this this is so much so much vegetables you know how how am i supposed to deal with this you know it's like like my kitchen has become a grocery store, you know, it's just, this is too much. But there's things you can do. I mean, we're just begging, don't, don't let this one thing uh, prevent you from, from um, helping out. Um, because it's fun. Like, I don't, like people who have taken part before, they've seen, we start a chat group, everyone's sending uh, different recipes, you know. You might, just, you might find out a, a new dish that you've never made before. Um, yeah, so and there's many things you can do. Cook in, cook in bulk and freeze it for later. Share it with a neighbor. Uh, donate it to the temple if that's, if that's okay. Or, or, uh, or there's, there's other ideas. Like even you can leave it here, um, of course, somewhere convenient for the temple. And we can come pick it up and we'll compost it, you know, put the nutrients back in the soil. We can work around it. Yeah, please, please don't let that amount of vegetables intimidate anyone. And um, I think this slide was supposed to be a little earlier. But nonetheless, we harvest our vegetables and deliver it to you within three days. So super fresh, super nutritious. You can see our fired up team here. We even got like this spider sadhu on top. He uh, he harvests the vegetables with his web. Yeah, so so we we'll make it. Work. And yeah, we just want to yeah just share share the wealth. Um, we all kind of have a part to play in this whole uh, puzzle of Prabhupada's mission. So somehow Prabhupada wanted this farm project so much. And even though we might not have full realization of it, of, of why, uh, somehow he wanted it. So the thing is, we all, we all have to eat anyways, right? I don't, I don't think any, there's too many hip sages here living in the, in the caves. And Are there? Maybe, maybe some. I don't know. But we all have to eat anyways, right? So what we're saying is, okay, if you're going to be buying vegetables anyways, why not kind of get the best out of your money uh, supporting a good cause. So instead of supporting these big corporations, you know, Jeff Bezos, uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, the, you know, instead of lining these guys' pockets, why not help uh, Radha Krishna establishment? Why not help one of the aspects of Prabhupada's mission? Um, and help us develop it more and more. And I, I know you guys all like to come to Gita Nagari. Um, so, yeah, it's a, it's it's a wise thing to do. And if you sign up, you want to say something? Okay, okay so I'll, I'll end up I'll end up here. I think Madam Madhur is saying it's time for, time for me to stop. So I'll uh, I'll give it back to him. And yeah, thank you very much for listening. Beautiful.
So yeah, so you heard about our team, dedicated team. You heard about our fertile land, about the blessings of the cows and bees and the roads that we have. I prepared a little bonus video for you. Uh, but before showing you that video, uh, I wanted to just summarize what you heard. So those prices that you have today uh, until April, 800 for full share for 50, that's just now till April. So please use this opportunity. If you sign up today, you also get a little present for us. This is a 1.5 pounds honey. Uh, so that's like a little bonus uh, for your support. Uh, but also, you will help us plan. You know, the reason why we're changing this pricing is because as farmers, we have to start now. The seedling process basically starts in like what, three weeks or so. And then we have to grow it in the, in the basement on the lamps and then in a, in a greenhouse and then we plant it to the soil. So it's like a whole process for the farmers. So the, the accurate, more accurately, we know how many actually shares we're doing it for, how many people we're doing it for, the better scope for us in terms of how many seeds to buy and so forth. So please help us if you are feeling like you would like to participate. You can also even upgrade, you know, you can buy a half share now and then upgrade it later to a full share. That's also possible. So, so we're going to have a table there. I know the prasadam starts now. So you're going to go and have your prasadam. You can come after prasadam, during prasadam or before and, you know, sign up for that. And just to summarize, I, I worked in Hamburg City Chippenland for four years. And what happens basically there is I know how Granny Smith's beautiful green apple stands in a warehouse atmosphere modified for one year before it sails to the United States for two months. And then it gets to supermarkets, you know, fresh apple from New Zealand after one year and three months. How much nutrients are there? What do you think? You know, being waxed and all that. Anyway, we're not going to go there. Uh, not to get you again depressed. Like what you're gonna have here is that some vegetables will get your table 24 hours after being harvested, and some three days. So this is the scope that we're doing for you guys. I mean, does is now growing in winter the lettuce? They taste like anything. I don't know how much prana they have. It's unbelievable. So we even grow meat a little bit more. <laughs> we're doing this one. All right. So I'm gonna show you a little video. After that, please go for prasadam. Or those who are extremely thirsty, I'm just gonna give five minutes of cacao from our from Dasnaku. But those who want to go for the side of yeah, no, 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 thank you. Okay. Oh, oh. oh I see. Oh. All right. So just this little video, two minutes video, and we're finished. So, so this is. Oh, sorry. The Maya breaks in. Let's give it five this seconds. It wasn't the video. All right, Krishna. Come on. I'm trying. <laughs> I see it's stuck. <laughs> So, so this is our team spreading straw. Maybe you can edit it. For the beautiful herd of retired cows, the oxen. Thank and you, everybody. For keeping the cows in the Effort to spread the straw. And then cows are, of course, are very, very happy. Like you see Georgia here, for example. They just love swimming in straw. The more straw, the better. That brings the joy and comfort and help. It's just a fun thing to do. When they are out in the pasturing grounds, Vishaka here with Bahula are just enjoying a good uh, relaxation therapy. Not only uh, humans like cow cuddling, but you know, cows like. Cow amongst themselves also. So you can see the shaka here is just uh, in total ecstasy and samadhi. Uh, of the Bahula's back. Not only cows, sometimes we see the beautiful deer as part of life in Vrindavan. And no wonder Bart Maharaj got attracted to this beautiful creature. So much so that he eventually had to become a deer himself. Yes, yeah, so this is life in Itanagari. Beautiful scenery, a real Vrindavan atmosphere of peace and tranquility because of Radha Damodar's presence of devotees. 
the atmosphere and the cows, the atmosphere is really went down. And Okay. All glory is filled us and the devotees. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you very much.